So what are we getting on the nose? Taste and uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're drinking bourbon tonight. An engineer, a math professor, and a sweet corn breeder. With our powers combined, we are three guys and a bottle of bourbon. What could go wrong? Brian, what did you buy? Welcome back. All right, tonight we are going to be reviewing uh, this Maker's Mark Wood Finishing Series, um, SE4 ER5. Uh, this is a bottle that I have been hunting hunting actually for a couple months trying to find. Uh, TJ had no trouble finding this at all. Charlie went hunting for a little bit and was able to find his. Um, and I actually just found mine this week. I am very excited about this. As you can tell, Fresh just got it two days ago. Um, TJ and Charlie's have already, uh, <laughs> well. Fresh, this, is, this isn't They're a no longer Brian. full. Let's go. Uh, we'll just say this. So. Uh, I'm opening mine up right here. This is a beautiful bottle. And uh, Charlie, I'll let you kind of talk about the details of this while I open it. <laughs> details. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is coming in at 110 proof, 110.8 proof. Uh, so a little bit higher. Uh, this is, I mean, Maker's Mark. Um, this is part of their... I mean, Makers 46 is a, the, the 46 stave profile. So these are uh, part of that wood finishing series where they're adding the, the, the staves to give it extra oak and an extra wood flavor over the, uh, their, standard, their standard mash bill. Yep. And then so last year they decided to start doing the first ever limited release uh, from Makers. And they did that with the 2019 RC6, which we have right here. And then this year they confused everybody um, and did two limited releases. So they did the uh, SE4PR5 that we are reviewing tonight. But they also did the 46 cast strength. Uh, so when you hear people talk about the 2020 limited release, you need to know which one they're talking about. So, uh, I've tasted both. Uh, Chuck has tasted both. Brian has not been lucky enough to find the 46 cast strength yet. Um, so please send more stuff to Missouri. Yeah. Thank you. I say now yeah, that being said, at least for me, the, uh, SE, R2-D2 Stormtrooper PR5 is my favorite. If I find another... Are you a little biased that you, you've just watched The Mandalorian? Is that why you have Star yeah, Wars? Are you, are you just Absolutely. like inserting like random gibberish or did you just go I mean, on Star Wars I'm, Marathon? I'm pretty sure that's what Makers does is they just insert random stuff like a better name. SE4 PR5. We, we need something else like name wise. Ah, C3PO. There it is. Right there. Okay. I see it now. But of the two, I like this one better, uh, personally. It is delicious. Now, the good thing is also you're going to get uh, to see if there like, is that neck pour bias, uh, since mine is definitely past the neck. Uh, so is Chuck's and Brian's is just open. We might get a little bit different tasting notes. Who knows? Yeah, I'm holding mine about my shoulder, not the neck. Yep, I'm going down. I typically judge, judge people by the neck up, so. I typically don't judge. I do, mm. absolutely. It's what makes our friendship great. Yeah. Well, TJ usually judges by the neck down, because that's usually more your look. Yeah, it's usually all I can see. That's why I take <laughs> a step stool with me. His nickname <laughs> is Fun Size. Yes. So I would say with like all maker products, yeah, with all maker products, I definitely get some cherry on the nose and caramel, vanilla, good bourbon notes. That kind of gives way into some, some baking spice on the palate. Yep. I agree with that. And then you're getting a bunch of... I don't want to say a Dr. Pepper finish. Like, oh, jeez. Yep. Here we go. To where I'm going. Did you just drink? Did you just drink a Dr. Pepper before we started this? 
Yeah. This afternoon on my walk with my baby. Is that 46, 46 flavors? Is that the? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. That, that makes sense for the makers. So we're talking about uh, the neck bias here. This is actually kind of interesting. Um, so I might be projecting here, uh, but as far as the nose goes, uh, just for everyone to know, like I, I tasted this once before. Uh, just what was that last week? We week before? No. Nope. No, you're wrong. We yeah, but we, we have we, not. We like to tell you when you're wrong. Uh, Brian was wrong. I'm wrong. My bad. What Brian's I referring to is spice. Yeah. Last week, Chuck sent a uh, Benny's pick, which was only French spice. So that was their their release for a store pick. Mm. So yes, go on had makers. With, with your monologue there. Yes. No, I, oh, I'm done. No, I'm tell done. us more how you're wrong, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, I've had enough to drink tonight. i tell you what. Uh, story of my life right there. Hmm. I'm enjoying the snows. This is wonderful. Yeah. It is... It is a maker's mark nose. Like, I feel like yeah. if I if I if I smelt this blind, I may not know that it's this limited release of makers, but I know it's a maker's product. It's just got that maker's mark nose. Uh, if you've had enough bourbon, you're gonna know like a Jim Beam nose. You're gonna know a maker's nose. You're gonna know a couple different uh, a turkey nose. Like certain things have a certain funk to them, and this definitely has that maker's smell i'm loving this finish like I, I it just it's lingering it's still there got spice a little bit of pepper i'm telling you it's it's, Dr. it's hanging pepper especially at 110 good. proof like it's not just the ethanol there like i know like we just came off a we, we tasted something a little bit higher proof a second ago and um so even stepping down that finish just mm -hmm. stays and i will say I mean, we've had some higher proof tonight, but I will say it drinks more like a hundred proofer, not a hundred and five. Um, I've got the Maker's 101 back there, and it actually has a higher burn, I feel like, uh, than this does. <laughs> Just all those notes are really balanced. Yeah. The caramel definitely mellows it out. It's a great, great finish. Yeah. Before before we we jump into ratings on this, I, I, I want to ask. So this is a wood finished product. So like thinking about other, whether it's it, you know it's not the same as makers barrel staves, but it's um, you think of the the nineteen twenty or the Elijah Craig toasted barrel or you know these other wood finished products. Where do you, where do you guys think this fits um, in comparison to those? I'm gonna put this above it. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I feel like I get more flavor and tasting notes from these. With I would um, yeah I would than those. Yeah, with the the 1910 and the Elijah Craig toasted and the Mickers toasted everything like that. When you toast it, you get more sweet on the finish, and this you, you definitely get those baking spices on the finish. You get all those flavor profiles. You're not just getting the sweet toasted finish. Now, I will say, um, <clears throat> for me, I'm someone who really likes that smoke. I'm um, just kind of partial to it. It's just kind of my part of my palate preference. Uh, so that 1910, 1920, uh, I really like the smoke that comes with those. Um, so I may look at that a little bit differently, but I would definitely put this above the Elijah Craig. Mm -hmm. You're biased to anything old Forester, though, so we can't really take your opinion. I am. So, so for those of you who are new to the podcast, uh, or sorry, YouTube channel podcast, the YouTube. Uh, five we'll call it what we want. It's ours. Yeah, we'll call it what we want. And after you've had five, you can say whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So um, I am a little bit biased towards Old Forester and <laughs> advocate for what they do. And I enjoy the smoke. So there, yeah, a little, bit, a little biased, but, but this is absolutely delicious. To be fair, Brian, you can back me up. Chuck is a little biased towards. Bardstown Bourbon Company. It's because it's amazing. Like, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> so we all have our that, stuff. We all have I our recognize preference. greatness when they're it when it's there in front of me. I'm sorry. Oh, you guys so you're, are you saying that Forrester doesn't provide greatness? Uh, not to not to Bardstown level. I will I will put that in the octagon any day. <laughs> well, yeah. We say 
different Bardstown approaches. They, they have has, different approaches. If if you're going Finnish bourbon, you can't touch Bardstown. If you're going bourbon for value, you can't touch Old Foe. Like Old Foe has mm. amazing bourbon for your value. But if That's I'm true. looking for like that bottle to just wow people and like take somebody on a different flavor profile than they're used to, Bardstown Bourbon Company all day long. So we so, we derailed here. Let's get this back on track. We're we're reviewing this. Yes. R two D two SE four PR five. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I, what surprised me about this is for a weeded mash bill like Makers is the that spice and um and, and maybe that's coming from the wood a little bit as well. But it's like that it almost gives you mm-hmm. almost a hint of like a higher rye mash bill and it, it just kind of surprises you. Yeah, I would say in a blind, you're not going to pick out that this is a weeded bourbon. It's got no. too much spice and flavor going on, and that might be from the stave finish. Um, but yeah, it it does not. It drinks like a complex high rye bourbon. I, I would absolutely 100 percent agree. Um, I'm someone who I've noticed as my bourbon tasting palate has evolved. I've actually started to, and we've talked about this before, um, just kind of the three of us, I've kind of evolved towards actually liking the rise a lot more than I did originally, which kind of goes back to our previous episode of like give bourbons time, keep trying. Uh, this is one I would, I would taste and feel like is right along with other top tier rye bourbons. Yeah. I'm going to keep tasting it for about this much longer. Um <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then cry because it's gone and you can't get it. Yeah, this good. is one. Actually and then I'll right go to now, DJ's house. <laughs> yeah. So I'm only this far into this one. I'm already thinking, where can I go to get a backup bottle? Yeah. Oh yeah. So so if we want to start looking at rating and start going, yeah. okay, this is the buy, this is the hunt. Yeah. Let's uh, right. let, let, let's start let's start going there. Okay. So final breakdown. Uh, this uh, price wise, you're talking about sixty sixty five dollars. Uh, and then availability is it's limited. It is their limited uh, wood series finished. Uh, we used to say limited release because uh, RC6 was the only limited release they did in 2019, but now they've done two in 2020. So this is the uh, wood finished limited release of 2020. Uh, and then knows what are we going to give it? Three and a half. I think it's good. Um, yep. Better than average, but not exceptional. Yep. I'd say it's right. strong three and a half. Yeah, three and a half. Four, it's <laughs> not. It, it's, Again, it's definitely three and a half. Strong three and a half. Three and a half is three and a half. Thank you, math professor. Uh, oh, man, we lost Chuck mid-video feed. Oh, oh, I'm here. I'm here. Thank Woo! goodness we lost Chuck. Oh, he's back. Oh, man, great. More video Come editing for me. Woohoo! Good um, to have you back, so, Just leave it in. Just leave it in. Yeah. We I'll call it a blackout. It yep. Uh, again, so Chuck's a sweet corn breeder, if you haven't figured that out. And he lives in the middle of nowhere. Big surprise. Internet's iffy. Um, so what are we going to go for palette? That I think is a touch better. I'm going to four on the palette. Yeah, absolutely for me. It is. There's yeah. so much going on. It's so sweet, smooth. Um, everything you want from a bourbon. And there's a complexity behind it with all the uh, the spices and everything like that. All right. Agree. Solid. All right. So uh, the finish. I'm at a four. Pa- I feel like I... Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a four. Um, it's something that, that it is... It lingers very well. It has a good uh, flavor profile on the finish. Uh, and once again, we kind of mentioned this before even though it's 110, 110.8 proof, it's something that doesn't have an overwhelming like burn or on the back end that really gets you. It's flavorful, it's nice. Uh, this this is what I'm looking for in a high quality bourbon. Yeah, I love how the palate doesn't, like it just, it goes from one to the next. So the palate kind of leads into the finish and it, it, it never lets, it, it never, recedes as far as that flavor. So I'm at a four. 
I agree. Absolutely a four. So the final recommendation, are we going to, uh, if we see it, buy it? Are we going to always have it on the shelf or are we going to absolutely hunt this guy out? I mean, we already know Brian. He had to hunt it to find it. The way he was talking, though, he was talking a backup bottle, though. That's a different different level. So, Brian? Yeah, so so for me on this... um, Are you going to buy a bottle tomorrow? Yeah, I already hunted, so it's definitely in the hunted category. And I'm already thinking about how I can get another bottle of this. Um, I I think I know of a place, so tomorrow uh, we might be leaving work over our lunch break to go get this. Uh, And and that's where I'm at. I, I like that much. I think for the price point, I paid $63 for it. Sadly, the place I was at was limited one per customer, which I totally get. Um, but yeah, it, it's worth me buying a second bottle to make sure I have it on the shelf. Chuck? Yeah, I, I, I'm not to that quite to that level. Perhaps that's just where my bourbon collection is. Um, I d- definitely like it. Would, uh, would be glad if I didn't already have a bottle and I was tasting it for the first time, I would definitely be going to hunt it. Um, but probably not going to get a backup bottle. I'm, I'm satisfied with this when it's gone. I'll maybe be a little sad, but that happens with every bottle, right? Yep. That's true. I would say for me, uh, having RC6 and it was good. Uh, this one uh, is definitely way better. Uh, so I'm excited for what they're going to do in 2021, but I would definitely buy a backup bottle if I had it. And if it takes me hunting a little bit to find it, like I did the first one, I would do it in a heartbeat. You cannot go wrong, uh, with any of the limited release of four roses or, uh, maker's mark, excuse me. (laughs) Can we edit that out? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, we don't edit anything out here. Like this is all real, right? Yep. So, well, and just to reiterate, like at the $63 price point, I think this is worth quickly talking about. At the $63 price point, I feel like I'm getting probably an $80 bottle value. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not, but at least that's where I'm at. I'm in the, I want to hunt a second bottle at that price point. Yeah, I mean, Um, you must be at that that price or at, at that level of hunting. If you're buying a backup bottle, you must be pretty happy. Yeah. Well, I mean, like if you look at it, like most limited releases, you talk BTAC, you talk uh, Midwinter Night Drum, you talk everything that's coming out around this time, you're talking a hundred dollar price range. So sixty dollars, you got a you get a pretty good deal there. Now, again, Makers is uh, yeah, not limited no, release doesn't equal quality, but yeah, absolutely, we've seen that before. Um, but it's definitely <laughs> well, we've there. tasted a lot of limited release that we're like mm, that did not hit the mark this one did and that's what i feel like really makes this feel like i'm getting what i want so many so many if i would taste it if i like had you know had a dime for every limited release that i didn't like i mean i'd probably have like 10 cents but you know so that happens a lot the final recommendation from us is if you find it and you do not buy it you're crazy um it's up to you after trying the first pour if you want to have a second uh backup bottle uh but you absolutely can't go wrong with let me get this right se4 pr5 makers please for the love of god figure out a better naming system um i don't know what would you guys say like apple pie or something like that for this thing um i was thinking a skywalker or you know go star wars I, I, I like C-3PO. Personally. I mean, okay. So they just got to talk with uh, Disney, but Hey, if you go to uh, Disney world and this is like on the shelf, that would be a pretty good deal as a dad when you're uh, taking your kid around the park. Yeah. So thanks again for watching again, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit like, give us a thumbs up, all that great stuff. Uh, so we know somebody's out there in the wide world of the web. Um, we're going to do this no matter what, because we enjoy bourbon. So thanks for hanging out with us. See you next. Cheers. Week. Keep drinking.